Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 12th of September. Pakistanis in Canada issue fresh threats to Indian diplomats amid Trudeau's visit. Pakistan says Taliban forces building unlawful structure in border dispute. And Macron visits Bangladesh to consolidate France's Indo-Pacific push. And now for all the details. Fresh threats against top Indian diplomats were issued in Canada's Surrey by supporters of Khalistan as they held a so-called referendum. In a video posted on social media this past weekend, a poster was seen calling for assassination of Indian High Commissioner to Canada, Sanjay Kumar Varma, and two other top diplomats, Manish and Apurva Srivastava. This came as on Sunday, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a meeting with his Canadian counterpart, Justin Trudeau, in New Delhi and also conveyed India's strong concerns about continuing anti-India activities in Canada, which were promoting successionism and inciting violence against Indian diplomats. Trudeau, however, in a presser downplayed the Khalistan issue and said, Canada will always defend freedom of expression, freedom of conscience and peaceful protest. And in a push for infrastructure development along the northern borders, India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Tuesday inaugurated 90 critical projects developed by the Border Roads Organisation. Out of these projects, 26 projects were constructed in Ladakh and 36 in Arunachal Pradesh, including the 500 metres Nechipuv Tunnel, which along with Sela Tunnel will provide an all-weather connectivity through strategic Tabang region bordering China. The Defence Minister also carried out Ishilanayas to construct the world's highest fighter airfield in Ladakh's Neoma. The revamped airfield in the region, which is less than 50 kilometers from the LAC, will enhance India's offensive capabilities against China in critical situations. And Pakistan has once again accused Afghanistan's Taliban administration of constructing unlawful structures at a key border crossing calling it a violation of territorial sovereignty. The Turkham border crossing between the neighboring countries has been closed since last week after forces from both sides exchanged fire, stranding hundreds of trucks laden with goods and thousands of travelers. Meanwhile, the Taliban's foreign ministry in a statement has criticized the closing of the border and said Pakistan's security forces had fired on its troops when they were fixing an old security outpost near the border. The Turkham border has long been a source of bilateral tensions between Afghanistan, disputes the century-old British colonial era demarcation. Islamabad rejects Kabul's objections, saying Pakistan inherited the international border after gaining independence from Britain in 1947. Moving on, there has been growing unrest in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as people say they are being forced to pay heavy electricity tariffs despite facing power cuts for hours. A report. Residents in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir are fed up of Islamabad's failed economic policies as they blame they are being forced to pay heavy electricity bills despite facing power outages for hours on a daily basis. A trader said the region produces more than 3,000 megawatts of electricity but their demand of just 400 megawatts has been long ignored. There have been several protests over the issue in recent days, but the Pakistan government has continued to ignore the people's plight. We say that 3,000 megawatts of energy in Kashmir is made. 400 megawatts of energy are made from the hydrant of energy in Kashmir. In Kashmir Division, the Muzaffarabad Division was made a project called Neelam Jailam. There was a lot of corruption. There was a lot of corruption and there was a lot of water treatment plant and water bodies made a lot of water. Locals accuse the Pakistan government only gives assurances but there has been zero development while Islamabad continues to exploit the natural resources of the occupied region. 
Well, after attending the G20 summit in India, French President Emmanuel Macron landed in Bangladesh on Monday in a bid to consolidate his country's Indo-Pacific strategy and counterbalance a new imperialism in Dhaka, where China's influence is increasingly being extended. During talks with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, Macron praised Bangladesh's tremendous success as a rapidly growing economy. The two leaders also signed bilateral instruments to improve cooperation in urban governance and infrastructure. The visit is being seen as a boost for Hasina in the run-up to the elections. Prime Minister Hasina has been under pressure lately as she seeks a fourth consecutive term as Prime Minister amid protest by the opposition. And a team of artisans from India's West Bengal are busy making idols of Hindu deities ahead of the upcoming festive season in Nepal. Take a look. A team of artisans from India's Kolkata who arrived in Nepal's Lalitpur a month ago are busy making idols of Hindu gods and goddesses with the onset of festive season in Nepal. The group brought a lorry laden with soil from the river Ganga and have leased a plot of land as they hope to do brisk business of idols which will be in high demand in a few days, starting with the Vishwakarma Puja, Ganesh Chaturthi and then the Shine and Diwali festival. हम लोग को कलकत्ता से आया तो गंगा जी का मिट्टी का मूर्ति बनाया है यहाँ पर आप चाहिए यहाँ पर तक चला आइए मूर्ति मिल जाएगा क्योंकि नेपाल और इंडिया तो भाई भाई है तो इधर भी एक हिंदू लोग रहते हैं और इंडिया में तो हिंदू लोग रहते हैं इसलिए सबसे ये कारण है the idols, made in different shapes and sizes, are given a coat of whitewash before the actual painting starts. The artisan said they will stay in Nepal till Diwali and have brought all required material from India. And after the historic success of the lunar mission Chandrayaan-3 and solar mission Aditya L-1, the ISRO is gearing up for India's first human space flight mission, Gaganyaan, which is expected to be launched either in the end of the year or in the year 2024. The project envisages demonstration of human space flight capability by launching a crew of three members to an orbit of 400 km for a three-day mission and bringing them back safely to the Earth by landing in Indian sea waters. A team of more than 120 engineers and technicians has manufactured the component for the mission. With a never-rest attitude, Israel is continuing to show its prowess in the space sector. Please, so you all aware of that? This is in a crewed mission and where three astronauts are going to be uh, going to be in this particular, involved in this particular mission. And uh, as you all know, that's uh, Russia has become a first place in it, second US, third is China. Once the success of Gaganyan, India is going to be fourth place and it's going to be repeat the history of the world. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see the same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.